after the good feedback received from the new rule changes video, I decided to have the next video look at fake a foul warning and the legal boundary line crossing, which was introduced in the 2017-2018 season. I expanded this topic and have them under the warning umbrella. We will look at all the different official warnings given in a game. The focus will be on the main warnings we will see in games, player coach behavior, delay of game, shooter disconcertion, and fake a foul. Important to note that every category has their own warning. A delay of game warning is different from a fake a foul warning or a shooter disconcertion. You can be warned for each different category and only receive a technical foul on the same second action committed from one of the categories. All warnings should be communicated to the player and coach of those that committed the infraction. You also let your crew know so that way they are aware of what the next infraction entails. I will quickly touch over the first warning that comes to mind and that's the coach player bench warning where there may be inappropriate behavior occurring from one of the teams and you decide to warn them. Behavior continues then you can move to the technical foul which is the foul that is associated with most of the warnings that you can give. There is a common misconception that a warning must be given for behavior or conduct before someone gets a technical, but clearly that's false. A warning for irritant behavior is a courtesy and can be seen as game management or under communication. A warning could be for comments being made, action from the bench, or any behavior you would not want to continue to occur in the game. Yes, staring can be penalized if warned. Yep. Time out LA. Whack! Get out! Get away from me, Steve. Get away from me, Steve. He didn't say a word. Technical foul, Wallace. He's gone. No, not right. I asked him three times to stop staring at me to try to intimidate me. I'm done. He's gone. I asked him. I told him. Give my I have already told Mike twice before to have him stop staring to try to intimidate me. He did it again. He's gone. Delay of game. All delay of game situations are to eliminate an advantage trying to be gained whether intentional or not. There are a couple of different scenarios that can occur that result in a different consequence. Timeout delays. When a timeout extends beyond the one minute given, a coach is gaining an advantage by having more time to instruct their players and thus delays the game. One example shows how to handle the situation. If, after beckoning the team on, the coach ignores and remains in the bench area, still instructing the team. The official re-beckons the team. Situation A. If the team enters the court on the second beckon, a warning is given to the coach. If this situation occurs again, the coach is hit with a timeout after the second beckoning. Situation B. The team remains in their bench area. Official hits the team with a timeout with no warning. If they are out of timeouts, then they go straight to A, technical foul. Similar situation. Third quarter is set to begin, but one team is still in their dressing room, delaying the start of the quarter. After the team finally enters the playing court, a timeout is automatically charged to them. Different situation, but similar consequence. A player has received their fifth foul and has fouled out of the game. The coach has a max of 30 seconds to have a substitute come into the game. Any longer results in a timeout being charged, and if they have none, is a technical foul charged to the head coach. Illegal boundary line crossing. For the first 38 minutes of the game, this signal is not to be used, but still enforced through a warning. Anytime someone moves any part of their body over the boundary line and interferes with an inbound will be given a warning. The next time this is done, they are given a technical foul. In the last two minutes of the game, the illegal boundary line crossing signal is used to serve as the warning, meaning any time you move any part of the body over the boundary line and interferes with an inbound, it is a technical foul. Even if you have not received a verbal warning earlier in the game, your warning is the signal. This was to prevent committing violations on purpose, to see what the offense is running, to inbound and potentially counter it. These last two situations you tend to see often. One is deliberately touching the ball after it passes through the basket. This gives an advantage by allowing the new defensive team to get back after a score by delaying the inbound of the offensive team, effectively allowing the defense to set up. The other delay is shooting the ball after the whistle. 
a call is made by the official and the player decides to shoot the ball after. This allows the shooter to get a practice shot and delays the setup of the next procedure. Similar scenario is after a whistle. The player holds the ball or throws, rolls the ball away, effectively stopping the setup of the next procedure. Tapping the ball away or holding the ball after a basket or a whistle or shooting after the whistle results in a delay of game warning, which is verbalized to the team who committed the action. Next infraction is a technical foul. The next category is shooter disconcertion, when an opponent places their hands near the shooter's eyes, shouts loudly, stomps their feet, and or claps their hands near the shooter. It may disconcert the shooter. If these actions result in the offensive player missing their shot, then a technical foul is called. If the shooter makes the shot, then the goal counts and a warning is given to the player and the coach. Last category, fake a foul warning. This warning offends players and coaches that a player would never give a theatrical performance to sell a call. From my experience, no coach or player tends to react calmly to a fake a foul warning. It is either met with confusion, questioning, and or anger. A fake a foul warning is any action by a player to simulate that they have been fouled or make exaggerated movements in order to create an opinion of being fouled and therefore gain an advantage. Both examples shown are talking about the head movement of giving the impression of a foul, which James Harden likes to do with snapping his head back, which results in a warning given. If a warning has already been given, then a technical foul is followed. Fake a foul can be given to offense or defense, with no contact or very minor contact, which results in the defense falling backwards and followed with a theatrical display. A warning is then given. In this case, one has been given, so a technical foul is then given. Procedure. After a player fakes a foul during live play, the official will signal fake a foul twice by raising and lowering the arm. At the next dead ball, the player and coach shall be warned. Both teams are entitled to one warning each. Next fake that occurs results in a technical foul. In the scenario that there was no opportunity to verbally warn the coach and the player at a dead ball, after the first fake a foul warning signal, and any player fakes a foul, a technical foul shall be given. In the case of a fake a foul being committed with no contact and is excessive, you can go straight to a technical foul. Lastly, in the case where a player embellishes contact but does get fouled, you cannot have a fake a foul warning and a foul. Just by the terms alone, it contradicts the term. You cannot fake a foul or create an opinion of a foul when a foul is occurring. In those embellishment cases, call the foul and speak to the player that they do not need to embellish or make a display of the contact. Proactive officiating for game management, a topic we will address in the future.